When you receive an email from IT4 Innovations about how to connect to one of our clusters, it will most probably look something like this. It will state your login credentials, that is, your username and your password, and instructions about how to generate a new SSH public-private key pair and where to upload it. The key pair mentioned consists of public and private key. Your public key will be used by the server to create an encrypted message that can only be read by a person holding a corresponding private key when you attempt to establish an SSH or secure shell connection server will send you this message. When you send the deciphered message back to the server, it will serve as a proof of your identity, meaning that it is indeed you who is trying to connect to the server and the connection can therefore be established. So let's generate this key pair. First we have to make sure that we have an OpenSSH client installed on our system. OpenSSH client is a program used to establish connections to remote machines. Since I'm using a Debian distribution, I'll type sudo apt install openssh-client. As we can see, openssh client is already installed on my system, and will, as will probably be the case for you too, since most distributions include it by default. SSH keys are commonly stored in the .ssh subdirectory of your home directory. If we don't have one, we can create it by running make directory .ssh command. To tighten the security, we then make this folder accessible only to ourselves by executing command change mode 0700.ssh. Let's enter this directory and generate our SSH key pair in it. To generate it, we'll be using the ssh-keygen command. If you are unsure about what to do, you can view its manual page by using the man ssh-keygen command. Here we can find everything regarding the usage of this program. For example, how to specify the type of digital signature Uh, that uh, we want to use. In our case, it will be ED25519 because it provides a high level of security. So let's type SSH keygen minus T ED25519. The program will then ask us where do we want to store our keys. Let's name our keys as something more memorable. For example, it4i underscore ed25519. After that, we need to enter a passphrase, which is essentially a password that you'll have to enter before being able to use your private SSH key. It serves as an additional level of security in case someone else should gain access to your private key, since they will be forced to enter a password before being able to misuse your key to identify as yourself. Let's have a look at the two files that were generated. id 4 i underscore ed25519 contains your private key. Whereas id 4 i underscore ed 25519.pop is a public key that you have to submit to the IT4 Innovations so that we can uh, so that we are able to verify you. If you are still unsure about which is which, the public key is the short one. It will contain just one line of text, whereas the public key is much longer. Now we just copy our public key into the self-service portal. Whose address has been stated in the email. Fill in our credentials and wait a bit before your key gets copied to the cluster itself. 
In the meantime, we can save ourselves some trouble by creating an SSH configuration file, which will serve as a de facto alias that we'll be able to type in to connect to our cluster. Let's create a file called config in our .ssh directory. After that, we can fill it with all the necessary information. Let's say we'd like to connect to the first login node of the Carolina cluster. In that case, we would define host, for example, as car1. Our host name would then be login1.carolina.it4i.cz. Our username or user is a user that we want to connect as on the remote machine. So in our case it would be dd-22-28-32. My identity file or my private SSH key is then located at home slash test user slash dot ssh slash it4i underscore ed25519 To connect to the cluster, we'd commonly use the following command ssh minus i for identity file, path to our identity file, user that we want to connect as, at the host name of the server, and then we'd have to enter our passphrase. As we can see, we have successfully connected to the remote server. If we were to use our alias, we'd type in just ssh car1 and, and enter our passphrase and we'd end up with the same end result.